guys, it's Sarah and today is Booklist Thursday. So this is a video series I am doing in collaboration with Lisa from Books and Smiles. Please check out her channel below, she's fantastic. And every Thursday we are going to be bringing you a fun list based on a topic of books, whether it's a genre recommendation or just a fun thing that's going around, you know, just kind of whatever we feel like talking about. So this week we are talking about, I guess a little bit of a controversial thing, we are talking this week about 2017 releases that we won't read. We have no interest in them for one reason or the other. They came out this year and we don't care. So I actually have eight books this time. Uh, we try to come up with 10. 10 is kind of our goal, but this time I was only able to come up with eight. So here's what they are. The first one is When Dimple Met Rishi, and this is by Sendaya Menon. I believe that's her name. I don't have any interest in this book and I never really did. I heard about it when people first started talking about it on booktube. It was going all over the place. This is a young adult contemporary following an Indian American girl named Dimple and Rishi is an American Indian boy, I believe. So Dimple is really into computers and coding and that's what she wants to do with her life. She ends up going to a conference that kind of has to do with that. And she ends up meeting Rishi, who is actually there only to meet her because they kind of have an arranged marriage thing going on, but Dimple doesn't know about that. And that comes from their Indian heritage. So Dimple is not about that. <laughs> she does not want to be in an arranged marriage. She has no interest in it. Her family knows that, but they kind of sneak Rishi in there to see if they can persuade her to change her mind. So I'm just not interested. I don't know. I just have a feeling that this would be a book that if I did read it, it would just be okay for me. It wouldn't be like glowing. It wouldn't be a five star read. I wouldn't be raving about it, blah, blah, blah. Just knowing my reading habits, I don't think that's what it would be for me. Therefore, I'm just not really interested. Even going to the library and getting it and reading it, I just, I really don't want to. All right, number two is They Both Die at the End by Adam Silvera. I'm really not interested in Adam Silvera as an author in general, and I don't really know why. Like, I can't pinpoint why. Um, <laughs> it's just, I I have a feeling that some of his stuff for me would probably be, seem overhyped, and just, I would be expecting so much from it, and I don't feel like I would be completely fulfilled. So I'm just, I'm really not interested in picking up any of his books. I'm really not. And this one follows two young men, I believe. I don't know if they're boys or young men. I don't know what their age range is. But they live in our society, but there is this app that is created that I don't remember what it's called, but it's something that calls you on the day that you are supposed to die. And it lets you know you're going to die today. You don't know how, you don't know when, you don't know where, you don't know any of that stuff, just that today is your last day on earth. So they created this app that actually, you know, forewarns you and then you can connect with other people who have gotten the same phone call or you connect with people who are there for you and who are willing to spend your last days on earth with you so you have a companion so you're not alone. And I think it follows these two boys who get the same phone call on the same day and they connect through this app and they probably fall in love in one day. So I'm just, I don't know, I'm not interested. Number three, <laughs> might require some pitchforks. Turtles All the Way Down by John Green. I don't care. I am not in love with John Green as an author, so that's why. I did read The Fault in Our Stars, which I loved. I loved that book. But everything else that he has written, just based on what I hear, I don't think I'm going to love as much and will not measure up to that one. And so I really just don't care about reading this. I don't even know what the premise is. I don't think anyone knows what the premise is. It's very hush-hush. So I couldn't even like a base, a desire to read it based on what it's actually about because I don't think anyone knows. And yeah, so I'm I'm not down with the hype on that one. Number four is Wayfarer by Alexandra Bracken. This is the second book in a duology that she wrote. The first one was called Passenger, which I did buy and read last year and I did not enjoy that book at all. I kind of hated it. I thought it was really boring. I didn't like the insta love that was in it. I thought it was just really the drama was overdone and I just literally don't care <laughs> about the second book. And 
I have seen people review it who felt the same way I did about the first book and they did not give it good reviews either. So I just know that if I read that book, it would be a complete waste of my time. And that one is a young adult time travel book. Number five is Windfall by Jennifer E. Smith. This one I could maybe be convinced to give it a try, but based on the reviews I've seen, everyone has just said it was fine. It was like three or four stars. It wasn't anything mind-blowing. So that doesn't get me excited to pick it up. The premise is kind of interesting. It follows a young girl and a boy who are best friends and I believe the girl has feelings for the boy and on his birthday she buys him a lottery ticket just as kind of a joke or just for fun and he ends up winning a ton of money. So things happen from there and as I'm sure you can probably guess I'm sure a lot of you know things start crumbling around them because when you bring money into any type of situation like that it always goes downhill. I don't know. Um, I could be convinced, I think, if enough people told me, like, it's really good, it's worth your time, but I just haven't heard much of that as of lately, so, yeah, I'm just, I'm not interested. I could be pushed over the ledge, but I wouldn't buy it, I would get it from the library. Number six is Always and Forever Laura Jean by Jenny Han, and that's because this is the third book in a trilogy of a series I have not read, and I don't have any interest in reading it. And this one is following a girl named Laura Jean who in the very first book she used to write letters to all the boys that she was in love with and she never mailed them out. She just got down her feelings in a letter and then, you know, tucked them away. But someone finds that box and sends out all of her letters. So all of the boys that she was in love with now know her true feelings and all that. So a lot of things happen from there. Um... Yeah, I don't know. I'm just not super interested in it as a whole, and therefore I'm not interested in the third book. Number seven is Once and for All by Sarah Dessen, and that's because I've really kind of broken up with Sarah Dessen as an author. I have read a couple of her books. I thought they were okay, and then I just recently DNF'd one that I thought was awful after getting halfway through it. It was really boring. So Sarah Dessen is just not one that I think... I will ever purchase another book of hers and if it's a premise that is really really interesting to me then maybe I would get it from the library but I still wouldn't have high hopes going into it and I believe this one follows a wedding planner and that's all I know um, but yeah I'm just not interested and then I've seen a few people review this book who are hardcore Sarah Deathson fans and they said that this wasn't even their favorite one so that really makes me think that I'm probably just not going to enjoy it. And number eight is There's Someone Inside Your House by Stephanie Perkins. This is categorized as a young adult thriller, kind of a slasher movie type scream feel. However, I have seen a couple people read it and they said it really felt more contemporary than thriller. It was like so much contemporary and then a little thriller things here and there. And that's not what I would be looking for. If I'm going to read something labeled as a thriller, I want a thriller. I don't want contemporary stuff in there. <laughs> so that really makes me kind of shy away from that one. And as I'm looking at my list, I'm realizing they are all contemporaries except for two which is Wayfarer which is a time travel it was still pretty contemporary but it was more time travel type stuff and then there's someone inside your house which is supposed to be a thriller but I've heard it's more contemporary than thriller so what is that saying Okay guys, those are some of these releases I do not plan to read. If there's anything on this list that you absolutely think I should change my mind about and give a chance, let me know down below, convince me down below, and I'll see about maybe giving one another look. We'll have to see. If there's a couple I'm firm, no. <laughs> but if you can change my mind, maybe I'll consider it. And please go check out Lisa's channel as well and check out her video today. I'm excited to see which one she's not going to be picking up and see if any of them are the same as mine. I think that would be really interesting. And leave me some comments down below. Let me know what you're not going to be reading that came out this year. I'm really excited to know if there's any that you are just completely not interested in at all. I think that's a really interesting topic. We always talk about what we're excited about and what's coming up and what we can't wait to get our hands on, but we don't talk a lot about stuff that we just want to stay as far away from as possible. I think it's a really interesting topic. All right, that's it for me. So let me know those comments down below and I will talk to you guys again soon. Have a great day. Bye.